Hi guys, Paul the DIY Guy here, and today I'd like to walk you through how you actually make plastic canvas. Now, in my latest Geek Incendiary vlog, I just said basically you make it, but I didn't really go into details on how you actually make plastic canvas following a pattern. So, today I'm going to walk you through how to count and how to stitch plastic canvas. Check it out. So first things first, you actually need to cut out your pieces. And to do that, you do that by counting the number of holes you want in your pattern. Now there are some helpful guidelines on here. I don't know how well they will show up on screen here. Uh, those are guidelines. I prefer to count anyways. I, I find it very difficult to actually see them when I'm cutting because you know they're a little bit shiny, but other than that, they don't really stand out. So to start with, I figured I would cut a 10 by 10 square. And to do that, I'm just using the point of my scissors to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes. So you're going to want to cut just past the bar into the next hole. So hopefully you can see this, but I have I have made a cut. Next I'm going to cut the same thing. I'm going to cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because I want ten holes, I need eleven bars that I've cut. So we'll cut eleven and then cut down the other way. And that should give you a nice 10 by 10 square. What this also leaves you is some teeth, which you do not want to use. So you can either cut just the nubs off, which tends to make a giant disaster, or you can cut out the other side, weighs some more, but is way less messy. Okay, now while well, we've got our piece to work with, so next we're gonna start putting some thread into it. Now, when you're trying to figure out how much thread to use, I typically go one arm length and then a second arm length. That tends to give me a good chunk of yarn to work with, but it's not so long that I spend forever pulling it through. Grab your darning needle. Now you probably can't see it easily, but this needle has a sharp point. Ideally, you want one with a round point. There's nothing here that you really need a sharp point for. I don't have any right now. I'm sure I've got some somewhere, but crafting supplies, you know how they work. I'll find it as soon as I'm done needing it. Anyways, if you're using a sharp pointed needle, make sure that you watch your fingers. I got stabbed a bunch when I was making my vlog. I would uh, advise caution. Time to thread your needle. I typically twist up the end of the fabric so it's got a little bit more of a point to it because you really want to make sure that all of the threads get through like so and then just pull until you're about halfway down and then make sure one's a little bit longer than the other because that's the part that we're actually going to be using when we're wrapping around these. So you need to find a place to start. Typically, I find it best to start over one from the bottom. So I'm gonna do a row, I'm gonna do a row going towards my thumb. So I'm gonna start at the second from the right. I pull this through not quite all the way. I'm gonna to wanna to leave a little tail behind the back. We're going to, um, we're gonna wrap the thread around this so that it just gets tucked away nicely. So I've gone through the bottom. I wanna go up a hole and over a hole and then back down through. Now be very careful here because you can easily, easily pull out your tail, which I think I just did. Yep, there it goes. See, just that easy. I'm gonna start again. Pull the tail through. Push this down. Now, 
as you get closer, pull nice and gentle, and you up with end up with a single stitch. And I'm gonna do an entire row of single stitches. I'm not actually working off a pattern in particular, but um, if you were following a pattern, you would want to follow where the next stitch is. Now, I like to go all the way across the back. So I'm gonna go to the next one on the bottom and pull it, again, being fairly gentle, because you don't wanna pull that tail out. Once you get a couple of stitches on, that's not gonna matter so much. And then go back up one, over one, Gives you two stitches. And I'm going to repeat this for the entire row. And that'll be your first row. When you're going to go back the other way, and we're going to do a second set of single stitches going the other way, start. from the top of the diagonal. So if you were, we're gonna end here, but we're gonna start at the top, pull it through, and then go down just over the last stitch. So it's gonna be stitched in the same direction, but we're gonna go back the other way. So go forward one, pull it through, and then you need to use the same hole as the bottom row. So the, the bottom of the second row goes in the top of the first row. Like so. And repeat again for the entire second row. As we're going, sometimes the tail will get fairly close, so I just pull on the needle a little bit, shrink the tail, and extend the amount of single thread that I'm actually working with. I will do that a bunch of times before I finish a piece, usually. And that finishes up our second row. Now that is single stitches. And for the most part, that's a lot of your pattern that's going to be, but I like to use some bigger squares. So to do these, the same typical approach is done. I'm going right to left, so I'm going to start at the bottom and then go up one, over one, on a diagonal, which looks the same, but the next stitch, we're gonna go in the bottom, but instead of going up one and over one, I'm gonna go up two, and over two, back down to the bottom, up three, and over three. Next one, up four, and over four. So we get this triangular shape that keeps getting bigger. Now to finish this, Instead of going to the bottom, I'm gonna go to the bottom left-hand point and up one. And instead of going to the edge, I'm going to go over one. Same thing, I'm gonna go up one. I mean, this is still going up two and over two. And for the last one, up one and over one. And that'll be a way to make some larger squares. Uh, this is done for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, it can make a really nice texture. In the case of the TARDIS, it helps to make the panels, uh, but it also lets you do a lot more area over a lot less stitches and still have it look nicely. Uh, if you look at the back, you can see that I'm still, I'm always trying to cover as much of the back as possible. It'll make it less see-through. All right, so it looks like this. I'm gonna do a row going down, single stitches. Like so, before I start another square. But 
but you'll notice that my yarn is starting to really twist up. When I find that happens, I lift it in the air, I let the needle spin until it stops spinning, and that will help untwist and keep some knots from forming. So I've done a single row, I'm going to do another square. Now it doesn't really matter where you start these or finish them, uh, I just try to make sure the back is as clean as possible. So when you're stitching your patterns, really look at where you are and where you're going to be going next to try and determine where the best place to put your start and finish is, or start and finish stitching in. Now I'll show you what it looks like if you go the opposite way. So if I'm going left to right and I start at the bottom instead of the top, and I'm going to do a couple of stitches here. Actually, I'll do the whole row. So I'm going to go through the bottom and then into the top. And in front, your stitches will look pretty much exactly the same. Generally speaking, they will look very, very similar, but if you look really, really closely, there are, you can, you can even see the little gaps here, but the biggest difference is in the back. So it just ends up with these up and down, up and down stitches at the back, and I find that this is not ideal for anything. Uh, I, I really dislike seeing these stitches on the back of my projects. Um, for one, so it doesn't cover the plastic canvas as much. You'll definitely see any pieces on the inside will have this plastic canvas showing. Not only that, but what happens when you try to put your thread to finish it, I always go underneath. And this, I always go underneath with the needle. And these ones are a little bit small for doing that. So uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend you try to get the back as covered in yarn as possible. So I'm going to finish this piece off using single stitches. Uh, then I'll show you how to put the whip stitch on. And that finishes our little square. So to finish your piece, this is the front, I turn it around and then I find where I ended and I just put my needle behind a few of the existing stitches, slide it through, pull it snug, and then cut close to the back. And it kind of tucks it away so it's basically invisible. Now you can see the one row that I did differently here. And that is why I prefer to do the longer backstitch than the shorter backstitch. Okay, but we're not done yet. We still have the outsides, which need to be covered somehow. So I'm going to get a new piece of yarn. I don't think this is going to be enough to cover it. I'm just going to make a shorter piece because we won't need anywhere near the amount of yarn I used before. Hopefully I don't make it too short. Okay, so this applies for when you're finishing early or if you finished your entire piece and you want to put the outside edges on. Uh, if you want to start a new thread, do the opposite of when you're ending it. So I, I tuck my needle in behind the back, I pull my yarn through, I'm going to pull, 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 pull until the tail is behind all the threads now now this is the same thing when you're starting when you start your pulling your yarn through this is going to really want to come out very easily so go very slow near the end and don't pull too diff too hard now to wrap the edges we're literally just wrapping it around the hole so I started in this hole on corners I like to do an extra couple of stitches so I'm gonna start one wrap around Pull, pull, pull. Okay. 
until I get it on top. And then I'm gonna wrap around to the next hole, go through from the back to the front, wrap around again to the third hole, and so on. Okay, now when you get to the edge, I typically will wrap once more in the last square. I will wrap once around for the corner, and then I'll turn my piece and wrap it around the hole one more time to start the next side. And then carry on. Okay, so I'm at a next edge. I will show you what happens if you only do this hole once. Actually, that one covered it pretty well, but if you only do it once, then you will end up with a little plastic corner that you can see. So at least do one extra stitch on each corner. Now I'm gonna leave this edge blank for a moment. The last thing to show you is how to put two pieces together. So I'm gonna cut myself a second square. Uh, I don't need it nearly as long, so I'm just gonna cut a, uh, a 10 by whatever here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes. In order to put two pieces together, we're going to do the same thing as the sides, but instead of going through one, we're going to go through two pieces. So, whether you continue on from the edge of an existing whip stitch or if you are starting from a brand new piece at the back, you still want to make sure you go through one side from the bottom, wrap it around both pieces, and then push your needle through both holes. Oh dear. Trying to keep your pieces together as much as possible. Go to the next hole and go through both sides. and repeat until the entire edge or what have you is stitched up. Again, on the edge piece, I'm gonna do one extra loop because I think it covers a little bit better on the edges. And then I go through the back and tuck this thread in just like I did when I was finishing up the last piece. Cut it nice and close. And then you've attached two pieces together. Now I obviously didn't put any yarn on this other piece but if you're putting together something more useful you would probably want to have some yarn on your other pieces. Just follow the patterns or if you're designing your own uh, do whatever you want. Super simple, right? I mean, it does take a while to make all the pieces, but as long as you pay attention to the pattern, I think you'll be okay. 